Welcome to Tackle Fanatics TV and in this episode of TFTV we check out Nash's Urban Banks Euro with Alan Blair, Ollie Davis and the rest of the Nash team. There is a wealth of urban fishing over on the continent and when a couple of our Dutch friends, Mikael Pilar and Mark Hoffman, invite Alan and myself down to meet them for a session on a beautiful park lake fishing for giant carp in the heart of Leon, it's decided we are going on a road trip. in the motor, haven't got my hands on the wheel, can mean only one thing, we're on a channel tunnel and we're heading over to Europe. I'm with Ollie. it's unusual bruv because usually you're always behind the camera. Yeah it feels a bit strange actually but... But um, yeah it's going to be a joint effort this one, you know we'll be flipping behind the camera, in front of the camera, but basically we're going on an adventure mate aren't we? Proper adventure. I know, proper yeah. adventure. Um, heading over to, to France and Belgium. Um, Got some friends over there, obviously the fishing's massively prolific, but we're gonna put a little spin on it and we're gonna do the whole urban thing. Got a couple of uh, banging locations. Yeah man, we've got a bit of a mission as well, a bit of a mission, a lot of driving, but hopefully it'll be worth it. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. The beauty of the tunnel is you're in France in a flash and soon we are motoring to the Belgian border heading to the port of Ostend where we are to meet our Belgian friend and Nash Benelux manager Gio Van Horen. Thanks mate, cheers. cheers. thank you. We're going to fish it. Yeah. That's never ending over here. Always look at them and you think, you know you've got to get somewhere, but you think, well, that looks quite good. Stop there for an hour. <laughs> Can you see it? Basically, we're following this road up here. This is the sea. Right. So, you know, the spots that Gio's taken me to before, you could probably, with a cyber shot, Flick boilies into the ocean. It's so surreal, um, you know. And you can see this here: massive harbours, big shipping port. But you know, like so many places in England, the fish are thriving there. What well, is it brackish? Water. Yeah, it's brackish, mate. But and they're just like living in harmony with the the, the white fish, the mullet, the bass. Proper dark as well. Proper dark. I like, definitely not had a hook in them, you know. Yeah, that's exciting fishing. They're not monsters, oh, you know, obviously we're going to shoot down to France after this and hopefully fish for some, you know, proper French kippers, but they're crackers here, absolute belters. You've got a sort of original stock in the commons and, and these mirrors that are getting caught, they're actually fish that I think VBK and some other sort of uh, yeah, yeah, Belgium organisations are introducing them. They're stuff. pretty forward thinking, the old VBK, I know they've got their own strain of carp and that, some really nice ones. Let's go catch up. <laughs> I knew you were saying it, I could see you thinking it. Let's go catch one. Let's go catch one. Is a piece of water. That is a proper piece of water. How many acres, old? We just drove a length of it. 
500? Easy, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. So here we are, sat, Alan Time Riggs in the van. Waiting for Gio, come on Gio. Gio, on, Gio. he's just round the corner. So what you got here, Al? Cling on leader. Cling on leader. Yeah, so I've knocked that. What did you just show <coughs> me? You cheeky little weasel. Yeah, I'm now rocking with the, the green, the beige, and uh, the silk. New cling on colors. Yeah. I remember when, uh, when Kev sort of first got wind of this type of leader material and um, frankly speaking I'd, I couldn't see it myself you know I've used the lead core all my life um, and then obviously the fuse leaders came onto the market which were also an exceptional product brilliant abrasion resistance yeah, I was quite negative actually about this this type of product but we ended up sort of uh, going down the sampling route and, and exploring w what it was all about and mate talk about eat your words like I don't think other than the odd occasion when the, the water's crystal clear, you know, and I do like those diffusion leaders for just disappearing, I'm using it for like 95% of my fishing now. Choddies, well, just any back end setup behind the lead holes. It's that subtle element. It is just that following the contour yeah. like, and, and pinning down, you know, and, and, and when that water's absorbed in there, it makes it even heavier and it just, Wants yeah, to lead core just doesn't sit like that. Just it? too many kinks, isn't there? You know, it's just too, too stiff. Too stiff. Not a PVA nugget or a weak link in sight. What do we have here? Geo! Hello. Yes, mate. How are you? I'm alright. Yeah, How are you? Good How are you? Man. Good, good, good. Just uh, around the corner, a guy is fishing who rode in the first monkey. Yeah. This way? Yeah, this yeah, way. Have, have you seen him? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. But yeah. he's blanking. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> have you been on the spot? No, I didn't stop, mate. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. We follow you. Yeah. Let's go on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Safe, Geo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lucky to have him as part of the team. It's really nice actually, he's come over to England. When did he come over? Oh, start of this year, yeah. spring. Geo lives in Ostend and we're going to do the night with him on one of the large shipping canals that massive barges use to carry goods far and wide. Where is papers? Pick up Geo. This is what we're after. Yeah. Well, we're here, it's pretty much nearly dark, so it means one thing, just flick a couple of rods out. Normally you use a marker flight and sort of cast it out, finding areas of gravel or silt or plateaus, bars, etc. But in a situation like this, you know, the fish use the margins more than ever and they're coming right along this bank that we're on. Um, but it's still no good just sort of dropping a rig anywhere. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for sort of flatter areas. It's all rocky, but I'm, I'm looking for areas with, you know, small stones and rocks as opposed to great big boulders or, or metal structures. Uh, and the way I'm doing that is I drop my lead onto the lake bed bottom and then I wind my tip down until it's a, you know, about three or four inches off the surface. Um, so that's down now, up to a point. And then all I'm doing is just moving the rod along left and right, sort of five centimetre intervals. And I'm just watching how much my tip's then dropping down towards the surface of the water. Ideally, I'm gonna move it along a sort of good metre, metre and a half, and it's gonna stay at that same level, meaning I've got a nice smooth bottom there. The next thing I do is I'll come in a foot and I'll repeat the process. That way I'm looking for slopes. You know, I'm seeing how flat it is. I've identified it's nice and flat that way. I also want to identify how sort of flat it goes back towards me into the bank and also further out into the lake. 
Um, so to, again, I, to do that, I just sort of lean over a foot further, drop the rig back down. You know, in this case here, it's actually pulled the tip under the water, so I know the bank is starting to slope off like that. As long as it isn't a massive drop off, I'm more than happy fishing, you know, on a slight sloping gradient. It's really important that you don't do this with your rig on the end. You know, the last thing you want to be doing is lifting a, a, a hook up and down, up and down over these big sort of stones, rocks, gravel, etc. You do your pointing straight away. So I've taken the rig off and I've just got the bare lead on there. You know, once I'm happy, I'm, I've located a nice area, I can stick the rig back on and, and drop it down. be honest, I'm really happy with this. I'm just going to grab a bucket of bait and the rig and I'm going to drop one down here for the night. I've got a nice simple basic pop-up rig. Uh, the main reason I've gone for the pop-up rig is just to keep that hook point up at the bottom. <laughs> Who knows, might be in the next 10 minutes, might not be till morning, but I think the lads are going to stay up and drink tea and yeah, talk carb. Sadly, I'm going to get my head down, get some sleep, uh, hopefully to be awake by the sound of a, a bite alarm. But yeah, it's been a, an eventful day so far. Definitely an adventure and uh, you know, we're only day one into it. Anyway, I'm going to get to bed. See you later lads. See Have you a good night. Well, Don't drink too you much out. tea. See you in the morning. See ya. What's happening now? It's a stale, mate. Well, just for the record, I'd just woken Al up to get his van keys off him because it had started raining. And it was lucky I did well, maybe not. Because his rod is just melted off. The fish has gone straight down. Down to these big stanchions where it has done him up like a kipper. Um, yeah, I've lost it. Yeah, I've lost it. One nil carp. Let's get another rig out. Sorted? Yeah. Well, we're gonna get going, yeah? Yep. Yeah, it's a quiet night. Um, Lost a fish about one in the morning. You I had, had a, a lovely sip pretty, didn't you? Rather unwelcome cruising, um, but never mind, at least I didn't blank. And Geo's had free bream, had a little bream this morning. Um, yeah, they're just not here. We said last night it's a big bit of water in it all. It's a lot of water, it's a lot of water. And it, and it doesn't pay to sort of sit here for days on end, um, waiting for them to come to you, so let's get going. Yeah, let's go, go find it. some fish, mate. Sweet. Geo takes us to another spot further down the canal in search of a bite. Here, at the mouth of the dock, is a shallow sandy area, and as we peer over the edge, dark shapes can be seen cruising about. 
Alan gets two rods out while I man the camera. We've moved over to another spot. Um, there's a few fish milling on on the other side of this bit of bank. Uh, you can't actually fish over there. We can't really get down to the water's edge, so to speak. But we found a set of steps here, which means if, if I am lucky enough to hook one, I'll be able to get down nice and safely and, and net it. Absolutely <laughs> just kiting on a tight line about 80 90 yards out. Look at rods buckled over and he's just kiting round into this deep water. It just goes to show, sitting in the car 10 minutes ago with Ole, saying how oh, I don't want to get depressed and deflated about the fact that the three of us done the night last night, that we never had any carp. Uh, and conversely, how oh, it's far too often, too easy to sit there, you know, and get lazy. Um, we got up straight away, we knew it wasn't going to happen, we packed up, we moved, we found some fish. And we're in. And we're in. <laughs> we're in Belgium, this is Urban Banks, Nash 2014. Love it. Wait a bit now. People say to me, like, why would you want to fish somewhere like this? Like, oh, cool. How could you not want to fish somewhere like this? I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it's ever been caught before. It's a truly wild fish. And that's it pulled my string. Yeah, he's a good fish, Al. He's not far off, but... <laughs> well, here she is. The sun's well and truly come out. It's a glorious day. And to make it even better, I've gone and bagged myself a cracking Belgian carp. Take a look at that. That's a chunk, Dad. It's a nice fish. That is a chunk. Yeah. I'm absolutely made up, Ol. So, yeah, good old Choddy. And there you have it, pure Belgium gold common carp. Hey! 
What an incredible carp. Just for the record, we've got 26 sticks. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Gio, who is tucked a bit further down, also lands the carp. Good, What's good. going on, Gio? <laughs> Just going? caught one of the rare mirrors of the of the canal. Wicked. Uh, the fish we fish for, actually, so uh, wicked, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at it. Yes, Gio! The mat was going away, it's now coming straight back out again. Never could have hoped for uh, catching a mirror in front of the camp. They're really rare on this, on this canal. We like fish one autumn for maybe two or three. So uh, really happy with, with this one. Next though, oh. We're in the centre of Bruges now. Yeah, buzzing for it. Don't know where Gio's taking us. Carrying the bare essentials of carp and lure rods, net and a small rucksack, we head off for a walk around town. Although the centre of town does harbour the odd carp, there is tourboat after tourboat causing disturbance and it doesn't look promising. So we stop and have a beer by the canal before going for a look round and mingling with the tourists. Now I'm not arguing about with you. We're in Bruges, done the whole historic town thing, which was actually really nice. Um, and we're down at another one of Geo's spots. And we don't have a bit of fun here. spread our baits along the shallow far margin. The sun is shining and we spend a very pleasant afternoon here. Despite Gio having had multiple hits of fish in the past, the bobbins remain motionless. See you soon, man. See you, man. See you soon. Thank you. All, right. All the best. Cheers, Gio, man. Nice and All right. Take it Very easy. All right. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Let's do this. Well, well, it's been brilliant, loved it. Day two, or day one and a half of the adventure, and yeah, it's going really well. Top bloke, Monkey absolute man. top bloke, couldn't have done it without him, mm -hmm. you know. Um, no, he's very one, generous to share his uh, spots. spots, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. How long to Leon? Seven hours, seven minutes. We've got no hotel booked. I need a KFC. And uh, I've had about two hours sleep. You've had about two hours sleep. So we're gonna drive safely. Gonna stock up on a good old Red Bull. 
and uh, hopefully find somewhere to chuck a couple of rods out tonight because <laughs> we haven't got a hotel room. See you in a bit guys. Bring forth the tunage. Sharing the driving, we eat up the miles, but by 11 o'clock it's clear that we're going to need somewhere to stop and get some sleep. Luckily for us, I knew just the man to turn to, who's a bit of an expert on fishing in that area, my good mate Nick Hellier. A couple of phone calls later, and we'd narrowed down Nick's suggestions to the River Sone around Chalon. The spot he had given us was only a short detour, and hopefully it would be a quiet place to grab some shut eye. Probably five more minutes and uh, we'll be at our river spot. Me and Ollie have had about uh, four hours sleep. Beautiful spot, real beautiful. Certainly not urban banks, but we need somewhere to kick and with a chance for a bite or two, so we dropped onto here. Didn't have anything, sadly we got a reel in now though. But we're going to meet Johan and Pete. They're off to fish the World Cup Classics. But before they disappear to Italy, we show us a banging little urban spot on the river in the center of Leon. Let's get the rods reeled in, get going, see what the day brings. And this is now herding <laughs> cows back into the field. Come on boys, come on. Back you go. Move. Mm. Nice work, Al. Good job. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Yes, Ollie. Right, good select for the morning. Um, God know what a crowd won. God know what the f After a drive of just over an hour, we arrive in the suburbs of Leon and eventually find ourselves at Johan's Gate. A real character, he treats us to coffees and gets out the photo albums. He too has fished the park lake where we are headed and he shows us pictures of some of the giants in there and gives us the lowdown. Max, Max. Max. Uh, ta, la is good oui. because uh, island, island yeah. very good. Island, la, very good. Yeah. Uh, plateau, oui. you know, plateau, very good. For, for me, it's the best. Okay. For me. He puts on shirt, yeah, man. Yeah. Big problem. You a tiger nut? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Tiger nut. Uh, we have a uh, shrink. As lupin? Well. Lupin? No lupin? Mm, lupin. Uh, lupins, yeah, chickpeas. Uh, lupin. uh, we have particles. We have particles. Yeah. 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 Well, again, well looked after. Uh, Jan's going to put us on some spots. We're going to go and meet his pal Alex. Um, yeah, epic. Had a lovely cappuccino. Lovely times. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely times. <laughs> And go Sam. win the competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We win. Really? The best. Yeah, yeah. The best team. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, fish, uh, yeah, fish, fish, yeah, 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 Just getting the gear out. Ollie's managed to flick a couple of rods out down here. What a lush day it's turned out to be. It's about 28 degrees. I'm really starting to get hot, but loving every minute of it. I'm just sorting my rods out now, and I'm going to quickly run through what we're what we're up to. You know, it is a, a particularly snaggy swim. You've got a big barrage here, and you've got a lot of water coming through. Uh, we're fishing the inside of it, but there is a multitude of snags. There's almost a back eddy, so any sort of trees or branches will get brought round here in flood and stuff. 
couple that with the fact that if you just look over this wall there's actually a car you know up on its end and you can see its boot rocking from side to side there's some big old weed beds down there it's basically snaggy carpy heaven and uh, I hope there's a few fish down there too but you need the right gear for it you know I'm about to break down my rods uh, been in Belgium I've been using the Klingon leaders not a problem um, but somewhere like this you've really got to, got to up your game um, and we're going to have to go on a snag leader so like a 0.55 or, or a 0.60 monofilament very very abrasion resistant so we'll whack some of that on first um, and then I'll explain the rest of the setup. But like fishing most of the time, guys, it, it does pay to keep things nice and simple. Simple, strong, reliable. So along with a snag leader, I'm just gonna fish a weed safety bolt bead. On, on the bead, I'll fish a big lead. You know, the flow is sort of chucking it through down there and I'm gonna need about six ounces uh, to hold bottom. The only problem with that is, and it's ironic really, because we were having a conversation yesterday about uh, you know what you enjoy the most in carp fishing and I mentioned I really like the preparation. And uh, Ollie and Gio laughed at me and I said, nah, but you know, when you're prepared, well anyway, I'm not prepared. It was a rush getting out here for this trip. And as a result, between Ollie and myself, we have forgot to bring any proper leads with us. When I say proper, I mean sort of six, eight ounces. Uh, between us, we've got about half a dozen, four ounces, uh, quite a few threes, uh, and lots and lots of small leads, you know, more associated with English fishing, dropping quietly onto a spot. So what we're going to have to do is double the leads up, you know, luckily on the weed clips I can stick two leads on there and Ollie's actually come up with a device where he's fishing a front uh, lead as an inline drop off and then behind that he's got a, a sliding uh, weed safety bolt bead to drop that lead as well. So yeah, it's all about improvisation, you know, it's all part of the fun. Let's get this snag leader on. To join it I'm just going to use a simple, I call it like a combi knot or a back to back four four turn grinner. Basically I'm going to lay the lines alongside each other. So I've, if I hold it in the palm of my hand there I've got approximately 15 centimetres on my main line and then coming the other way I've got approximately 15 centimetres of, of a snag leader. And I'm going to simply hold them together like that and take one of the sides, I'm going to start with the main line first and just form a loop, like a, a twisted loop. And I just pinch that twisted loop in my finger like so. Yeah. My main line's still pointing this way. Straight through the hole one, two, three, four, five. Five times on this side. With the thinner material, whether that's braid or, or mono, with the thinner material, I like to do one more than the thicker one. So I'll pull that down, make sure it's really wet, bed it down, and then I'll do exactly the same on the other side. So take my snag leader, again, form a loop in it, and then just go through it. One, two, three, four. So one less than, than the other side. Again, pull that down, get it nice and wet. Wet the other one again. And then nice and consistently, I'm just gonna bed it down till they meet in the middle. Give it a gentle pull. And then I'm gonna take each tag end, give that a little pull, give that a little pull, and just gently tease everything down like so. Finally, I'm going to give it a good jerk. You know, if it can stand me doing this and giving it a good pull, then those lunges from a heavy fish in that deep water and in the current, it'll be more than up to the job. You know, and that's a very, very simple sort of back-to-back -back combi knot. Next thing, I'll just cut the tag ends off. You don't need to be too neat here. I leave, you know, probably five mil. And I can now wind that snag leader onto my reel. Snag leader on. Next is to add uh, the weed safety bolt bead. Just simple case of putting on a tail rubber and adding the bead. Uh, on goes a swivel. I'm just gonna tie that on with a blood knot. So six turns, back through the eye, uh, back through the loop at the top, sorry, and then through this large loop that's just been created. And you can use what you like there, guys, you know, a grinner or a palomar, I'll just, I'll just use a blood knot and have done forever and a day. Again, wet that, slide it down. Again, do the fish shake in the head test. So, get that on there and give it a good jerk. You know, that's when it's likely to go if the, if the knot hasn't been bedded down properly. So that's on there nice and strong. Finally, I'll just lock that in. Pin in there. And that prevents the bead from coming out of the swivel, meaning the lead will discharge. 
As I mentioned, I'm gonna have to toes up on the lead, so I've got a four ounce flat pair there. And that's another couple of ounces, giving me about six. Uh, just to finish it off, um, I'm gonna probably bag this up. Uh, yeah, the reason I wanna sort of put all this in a bag with some grab inside it and also tape up the, the, the leads to the lead clip is because on the cast, due to the large weight here and the fact I'm using this sh the short clip, when they hit the water on impact, it forces the tail rubber off and you end up losing your lead. It's, it's really frustrating and annoying, but it can be prevented. And you tend to only get it really when you're fishing with very large leads uh, and bags and bait and stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna quickly whip a bit of tape around here and you can just wrap this up. No need to be neat. Like so. And finally, I'm gonna stick on the hook link Ollie, you're in. <laughs> Three tiger nuts. What do I catch? A barbell. <laughs> Not quite what we were after. Let's get him back. Let's get him right back out. Finally, I'm going to attach my hook link, a blowback rig, a size 4 twister, 35 pound armor link. That hook point turns over every single time. Um, it's a very, very reliable rig for me, it's never let me down. Yeah, no additional buoyancy, no snowman. Uh, I've got a 20mm bottom bait there and I want it nailed to the riverbed. Uh, nice and simple. Again, going to join it on with a blood knot. So around six times, up through the loop this end, back down through this loop. Wet it all nice and tight. Get the knot bedded in properly. Like so. A whole lot's going in a bag. So we've both agreed that we're definitely going to stick to the fruity baits here. That's the, the Scopex and the Amber Strawberry. The last thing we want to do is uh, draw any catfish attention to ourselves. We're just not geared up for it. I'm just going to top that up with a bit more crumb. like so and then I can feed in my hook link with a few broken boilies so fill that up about halfway drop my double lead system in uh, and finally I'm going to use up a bit of boilie crumb just to cover the whole thing up tip that last little bit in there like so I just like the whole solid bag thing you know you're fishing over some real real rocky ground out there um, I know that once this bag breaks down, um, the flow is going to wash the dust away. There's going to be nothing left around my hook bait at all. I'm doing it more to, to protect everything and to get it down there in one piece. Um, there, there will be a few broken boilies left around and, and that's enough for me. You know, that hook link that was probably getting on for a foot long, that will sort of straighten itself out in the flow. I'll have my lead sitting here uh, and my hook bait further downstream. It is a very big bag. Um, uh, and as a result of that, you need a sort of a suitable rod to cast it out there. Like I said, I'm using three and a half test curve rods, which will be more than ample to, to sort of lob this out the 30 metres. Uh, I want to get it. Let's see if there's any carp about. Just had to take the go, front tips buckled over, but just held there, so sort of no line getting taken. And uh, the culprit was a barbell, but you can see there, it's absolutely nailed that rig, blow the tubing right back. Let's pop that over there. There you have it. The gorgeous little Leon barbell, Urban Bank style.
well. <laughs> I've got the first car for the trip. I can't really claim this one because it was on Al's rod as he was putting it out. But an incredibly beautiful little common from an immense piece of water. He's got a hard life ahead of him, this one. Turned into a right little barbel session. Quality fishing. Um, of course, we've had this, the carp as well. I also have, however, been cut off a couple of times. But that's part and parcel of this style of fishing. Day draws to a close, and we start to pack the stuff into the van once more. It's been a hectic couple of days, and we're both exhausted and looking forward to a night in the hotel we have booked before spending the next two days fishing the legendary Leon Park Lake Tet Door. We dump the gear in the room, have a quick shower and go downstairs to meet Mark and Mikkel for some dinner at the pizza restaurant. We're here at the bar. <laughs> you would think it's the gay bar. <laughs> but it is. It's the pizza bar. Today we're witnessing Ollie Davis and Alan Blair. Not really relative of the people who spend money on Greece. But here we have some pizzas <laughs> and we gotta eat like dogs. Kings. And like kings, so tomorrow we're gonna catch like pigs. <laughs> they had arrived the day before and baited the area that they intended to fish heavily with several kilos of amber strawberry. The lads had only fished for a few hours that afternoon, so... but they'd managed seven bites, although they hadn't yeah. had any real whackers yet. Being super keen at the prospects of some good fishing, we both sit and tie a couple of rigs ready for the morning. Mark and Mikkel suggest that we start off just down the bank from them and with it still being dark it seems as good a place as any. It's also a good area according to Johan. We both rig up our rods and wait for first light. It isn't long before there's a shout from down the bank and I wander down with the camera to see what's going on. Mark and Mikel are both bent in the fish, double drilling as they call it. Neither a giant, but with a mid-20 mirror and a mid-30 common in the net, it's a great start to the day. Release the scarf in the park, like. Yeah. 
Die ook heel veel uh, sowieso. Elf. <laughs> Prachtig bij Nu op één lijstje. Als ik hem had, zou ik ook denken dat hij 12 was. En snel die hengels uit en volgens voeren. fish what's looking like it's gonna be a very productive session Mikhail Mark 5 just had one each as well and they're both playing it at the same they're time both playing it at the same time yeah special park like very special <laughs> what's that this is the carp 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 yeah you want to see touch him <laughs> wow! I can't put it. What the f? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? More? No, he's okay. He's alive? Yeah, he's alive. We put him back alive. Wow. So we travel all the way from England to fish on this lake. You, you jog, you run the lake every morning? Every day. Every, every day. day, okay. Every day. <laughs> nice. If I lived here, I would fish every day. <laughs> 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 It's beautiful. Of course yeah. you can. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we came for. And this is it. First fish at the Leon Park Lake. You, you put him in. Uh, we let him swim away again. Yeah, we we put him away. In the gym. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have a lovely day. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> this is your girlfriend, Jerome? No. 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 What? A oh, oh, white boy. What are you doing, boy? Basically, I took your advice, mate. Yeah. Put a kilo of amber strawberry underneath the tree, flick the rod down there, and it's uh, the second time it's gone. I had a nice upper 20 mirror about half an hour ago, and it's just rattled off again. But the fish is pulling this way, yeah. and I'm on a floating raft that's been pushed with it. It's quite an adventure in yeah, the park. I, I had to come out onto this to get the angle around. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's always an adventure, mate. Yeah. And then what about you? Two? Three? Uh, three now. Three? Up to 23 kilo. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Up. What happened? What uh, happened? It's, it's fallen off. And I could see a big black shape. It was quite a good one, eh? It's uh, fishing. Now that's I have fishing. to get back. <laughs> you, you got your spot shoes. Don't break your ankle, eh? Or you pull the net, I pull you. Does Kevin have a good uh, insurance policy? Insurance policy, yeah. yeah. But how do you get on? You don't remember? It was in close. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Probably closer than now. Wappa. Cheers, boys. Like a boss. You know, Gee, the English Chodrig. <laughs> Chod Chodrig. What did we tell you at the beginning? <laughs> The first thing we say to those people, <laughs> do not use jotties. <laughs> After a few quiet hours, Alan and I decide to have a move. Jerome reckons the fish are around the opposite side of the island. We load up the barrows and head round, stopping off at the cafe for steak and chips. The tables overlook the lake, and beneath us swim giant roach, bream and a few small carp. We quickly have them feeding on bread and broken amber strawberry boilies.
incredible fishing and then a zoo. Incredible. We get the rods out to the back of the island where Jerome has suggested. And before Alan can get his second rod out, the first is away. You can see the book, the food, the, the fish food. No, see, you're getting back your food. You want to see it? See you want to touch? Touch it? Look at the tail. Look at that. Yeah, we pour some water on him. Keep him nice. Wow. You want to see it? <laughs> 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 What are you saying now? I'm saying we're in Leon, Urban Banks, Nash 2014. What a moment, what a moment, result. There's no more action and as dusk falls, we pack up and make the long barrow trip back to the hotel. We meet up with the boys again and they show us some of the fish they've caught that day. They are now up to 15 in total, the biggest just over 20 kilos. The pre-baiting is certainly paying off for them and the fish are clearly loving the amber strawberry. The weather has changed and it started to rain as we barrow to the swims in the darkness. The boys explain they have to go to the police station first thing in the morning to report the theft to Mikel's phone the previous day and worried that someone might beat them and fish their baited spot, they ask me to fish there. I don't want to take advantage of their hard work but they insist, and it's mutually beneficial, so I don't put up too much of an argument. I'm in. <laughs> it's really kicking off, as you can see. The rain's coming down. Ollie's lost a fish. He's got another one on as we speak, and uh, I've hooked myself one. I've dropped onto the same spot I was yesterday morning. I come down last night, give him some bait. <laughs> Bit sneaky, really, but yeah, they're big fish, you know, they like boilies. Get him. Fell off. Wait. Wait. 
go! <laughs> this fella is aiming it for the brain. Let's go, let's go. We did the first take we've seen and we're about 30 seconds. And then the second take. What we're witnessing over here <laughs> is a tremendous carb. Oh, well, I can't say you can call it a carb. <laughs> Yo, French dad, guys. Hey, coffee. Hey. Coffee. Room number two. Well, yeah. well, this is stunning, people. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. That's what we like to see. Well, Freddy helped me land that fish earlier. It's popped along with a bite to eat. He's whipped this up last night. Looks really, really tasty. That's how we roll in Leon. Cradle on top of a bike trailer, and that's how you mission around the park. When in France. When in France? Yeah. Merci. Uh, we've been so well looked after. Fair play, Jerome. Massive help. Thank you. Messi. No problem. Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's been mix. happy times. This morning, it's been a, a morning of mixed fortunes. The boys, uh, Mikael and Mark, they let me fish their area. So they baited. Very kind of them. They've gone to the police station because they've had some more gear, Nick. Can you believe it? Bad luck. Had two takes within 10 minutes. Both rods and both of them are lost in the weeds and I was not happy. Alan will tell you I was chucking my toys out. It's the never nice to lose them, mate. I'm so that wet. first one on the canal, like, oh, I was just... Hungry, tired, wet. Anyway, persevered. Alan, give me a kick up the arse. Yes, perseverance. Big up. And in the net. Do, do, do. Always nice to see two nets in the water. One. About 15 kilos. Yes, I mean. With a bit of weed as well. Uh, he's about the same. Yeah. So yeah, good nice, angling, mate. Nice grace of thirty. <laughs> um, just run us through real quickly, mate. Like, what did you? What happened? You know, I know. Like, bit of bait went out last night. They said they're already on the bait. Yeah, bang on the bait. So uh, a tiny bit of particle in the boat. Mm -hmm. Some twenty mil ambers, some fifteen mil ambers. Yeah. Just a little bit. The first boat <sighs> got out there Love once, a bait boat. and the bait boat messed up. British bait boats. Listen to this, British bait boat manufacturers fix up because the Europeans have got it sorted. They've got proper boats that don't break in the rain, that don't dump bait <laughs> in the margins. Look, regard, les brulettes dans les margins. Your French has massively improved as well while we've been here. You've got to give the locals credit, you know, they've, they've been really good to us Absolutely. and you've got to make the effort to to uh, speak their language, so many English don't. So learn a bit of French and petit peu de français, oui oui. <laughs> well, I've got here, here, big bows. Do the rig talking French. Rig <laughs> talk. Uh, my hook, my hook is a size four. Is a size four twister with the, the long hair, the missing link, hook link, and uh, two times twenty millimeter amber strawberry. C'est très bon. Oui oui oui. Yeah. But no, it's, uh, it's been a brilliant trip. We're both soaking wet, we've both had a few fish. Um, I think it's probably time to get sorted and go home. Yeah. So, uh, lovely times. Lovely times, Le Français. Oh, who do we have coming to the swim? <laughs> it <laughs> is the kill. Pump, pump. What, what's pump, happening? What's happening? Sickos. <laughs> <laughs> and the new outfit! Oh, yeah. I couldn't find a raincoat, so I bought some uh, garbage bag. Man, yeah. thank you very much. What, what's happening? That is a nice Two cubs! Look. You have two in the net also? Yeah. Great, great, great. All right. So yeah, these boys, Pilar yeah. and Hoffman. Mikhail. 
tick them. Um, top, <laughs> top, 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 top boys. Keep Thank an eye you, out. Lads. Keep an eye out for their website, Carperveld. Dot <laughs> NL. Dot NL. Dot NL. And uh, their lovely videos for lovely times. For lovely times <laughs> in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's rolling. There you have it, first fish of the morning. Gorgeous carp. Got a couple more in the nets. Also had a real small one that Mark showed you. About a pound, but yeah, gorgeous fish, lovely colours. And they're all so different. Now the next one I get out, it looked totally different. Holy <laughs> <laughs> this is the dinner I've been eating. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you seen that program on that Geo Monster Fish? What he's going to be on there tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. There's balls here. This is, this is the crowd, eh? Yeah. And, the, the, crowd. and the, crowd, the crowd goes wild. Welcome to Nat Geo Monster Fish. <laughs> we have a guy who's just caught an amazing carp, a monster carp. Here it is, right here. This is the man here. <laughs> this is the man. It's this is oh. All right. Lovely times, French adventure. Okay. Well, cheers, Al. Cheers, Al. Thank you, mate. Brilliant trip. Finish with a bang. Finish with a bang. <laughs> awesome. Time to go on, mate. Time Till the on. next time. Next time. Next time. Soon. You've been tuned into Tackle Fanatics TV and many thanks for watching. Tackle Fanatics are a full Nash stockist and offer their complete range at the best prices around. If you've seen a price somewhere better, call us on 0208 949 3307 and to view our range, log on to www.tacklefanatics.co.uk. Remember Tackle Fanatics also offer finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. Tight lines from everybody at TFTV.